there are air coolers with a single fan. There are air coolers with two fans. And then there is the Enermax ETS T50 AXE AX, AX, AX I, I have no clue, with this piece that actually does something. But before we get into that, this is a 160mm high cooler with a 16 RPM fan on top and thanks to that heatsink offshift, zero RAM restrictions. But what's really interesting about this is the base. Going up from the old black coated 57 piece 12 FPI fin stack, we got 5 heat pipes. But it's a 5 heat pipes direct touch base. Something that you don't really see that often nowadays. There are some other interesting things that are to note here and we will get to some of them in, in a minute. But first, let's go to the performance. Using this poor thing, we created three scenarios. A workload of 120 watts, a mid to high workload at 250 watts and a god tier at 320 watts. Yeah, good, good luck doing that. To get our numbers, we switch between the different modes and BIOS with pretty much every imaginable setting locked down. Then we hit the CPU and wait for about 15 minutes until the cooler reach what it can do over a permanent time span. And then we just gradually lower the fan speed in 10% steps and we note down the package temperature average over a 2 minutes time span. From there we deduct the air temperature in front of the fan so that we get the temperature above ambient at any given fan speed. For the noise, we position the cooler on this table and we position a tripod with a dB meter exactly one meter away and we measure the dB of the fan and then we lower the fan speed in 10% decrements again and we note it down on every step. Let's begin with the low workload. Allowing the chip to draw up to 120 watts did not make the Anamax air cooler sweat really too much. At 36.9 degrees C above ambient, it is roughly performing in between a Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 and a Dark Rock Pro 4. Unfortunately, we do not have that many thicker single tower, single fan coolers in our list right now, but compared to the thinner ones like a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo or Freezer 34 eSports single, it's obviously the better choice. Over on the noise to performance graph, we found pretty much what we expected. It's not quite a single tower dual fan cooler, but it's also indeed better than the thinner ones. The Freezer 34 eSports and Hyper 212 Halo didn't stand a chance. But compared to the eSports duo, the Anamax T50 doesn't really stand a chance either. Going up from there, I would have loved to provide you with more interesting numbers. However, the 250 watts workload was too much for the T50 to handle. It failed. But for the lower ones, kinda fine for a single fan and single tower cooler. Not, not exceptionally good looking at the noise to performance ratio, but it's fine. Let's now talk a bit more about the cooler itself. As I said before, the cooler measures 160mm in height and the whole thing is about 112mm thick, including everything built around it. The fan used on here is also the RGB machine of the cooler. Controlled over PVM and a 3-pin ARGB with included splitter, it looks okay. The implementation is okay. According to Enermax, there is a twister bearing in, in here rated at up to 160,000 hours, which is a lot, even at Noxia standards. However, I wasn't really able to find out a lot more about the bearing because it seems to be a fully Enermax thing with patterns all over the place and no real documentation. So it has a bearing and it is rated for a lot. But on the bright side, the fan got the same auto RGB feature we've seen on the Cooler Master Halo 2 fan. As soon as PVM is connected, the fan starts to shine in a rainbow color light, which is awesome if you ask me. Then there is something awful but survivable. Both the front and back are covered with my favorite total anti-breathalyzer, plastic. But it's not that bad. A, the heatsink has slits for fan clips, so with a bit of tinkering you will mount whatever fan you want on here. And B, because these pieces of plastic are actually just mounted to a regular 120mm fan and 
Even if Animax made the costly attempt of hiding this from us, we can just unscrew them and then we can screw the pieces of plastic to another fan and mount the whole thing back to the cooler. So yeah, it, it's essentially a sophisticated plastic fan clip. I don't know. If you want to use different fans, you can still do it. It's, it's just instead of metal, they use plastic and it looks a bit differently. And now let's get a bit to some craptastic product description. Now, there are quite a few claims here, like vortex generator flow, and they mean these two spoilers here being on every fin, and these are supposed to push the air outwards into the heat pipes. Yeah. Then we got the pressure differential flow design. For some reason, leaving this triangle is supposed to give you additional 15% airflow. And then there's the vacuum effect flow, which just means close off the sides to not let any air escape, something that everybody has been doing for the last 10 years. Now, I don't want to say they are not right with the three things they are claiming here, but it sounds a bit like, like a marketing thing. 15% airflow, we can't measure that or we can't measure the difference, but how about just add a second fan? But we can't do that because we have the air guide. The idea behind this one is actually kind of cool. The part in the center is actually rotatable. And if you look really close, you can see that all of these lines are slightly shifted or tilted towards one direction. And what you can do here is rotate the thing in a way that the air is gonna be pushed in into, essentially, the exhaust fan of your case. The idea is, it is kinda cool, sure, but how weak does your back fan have to be to make this actually useful? And is the added restriction of having this piece on here not worse than the benefit? And of course, how much better would the cooler have been if you just added a second fan instead of this? Cool idea, but there are better ways to spend your money. And at this point I also want to remind everybody that this whole thing in the back is mounted using the exact same fan clips as the front fan. So if you want to add a second fan, you can just unscrew the whole thing, mount the fan clips to whatever fan, mount it on top and enjoy either a better performance or better noise. Compatibility-wise, the cooler can be slapped on pretty much anything. AM5, AM4 and so on until FM1 for AMD. On Tim Intel, it's the newest LGA 1700 and all the way back to 775 and some special 211 and 266 of course. To get it mounted, it's the usual process. On AMD, remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them using the included AMD screws. From there, slap on the AMD retention brackets and mount the whole thing down. Over on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate according to your socket and shove in the screws through the sides and secure them on the other side using the washers. And then position it behind the motherboard. Then slap some spacers on the top followed by the retention brackets in an outwards pointing position and then screw everything down. From here we need to remove all the turtle toys of the heatsink and screw the whole sucker down. All in all, the Anormax ETS50 is a, is a interesting fan. You, you don't see that many 5 heat pipe direct touch bases out there. Design wise, I think it looks, I think it looks kinda good. The, the top really suits me. I like all of these lines and slim cuts and all, and the usage of plastic is is obviously an issue for me in general, but I, I got to say how they they cut the plastic, them being like thin lines, it does some, add some aesthetic that is appealing to me, but you will have to decide for yourself. Performance wise, it's, it's okay. It's above any single tower, single fan cooler we've tested using the new setup, but it's not quite a thin single tower dual fan cooler. Noise-wise, it's okay for the performance, but not like revolutionary. And then there is this, which on paper, when I saw the product page, looked kind of cool. But now in retrospect, it's, it's more of a gimmick. I, I don't see this doing so much if your exhaust fan is worth any money at all. But in the end, remove it 
add a second fan and enjoy. But in total, it's okay. For a 7600X, 13600K, this should do it. But I really wouldn't go that much higher. 13700K gaming, okay, sure, but not necessarily for higher workloads. Anyway, I think this should be it for NMX and their ETST 50 X X A X C. I I'm sorry, I I just don't know. X. The one that looks like it has two fans, but doesn't. And at this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to find out if we can attach a fan strong enough to make that thing spin by itself. How cool would that be? Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Geometic Future Eskimo Junior Neon 36. Yeah, the name is long and has Junior in the name, but it is a big boy. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.